As the wind began to howl, my mother got up out of bed and looked totally unafraid as Hurricane Andrew hit that area with a force that was unparalleled. It looks like our luck has won out. It goes back to building a house. When I was about nine years old, my mother picked us up after school. She announced that she was going to build a house. She laid the block, she put in the wiring, she put in the plumbing. She knew she hadn't cut corners. She knew she'd done it the right way. When I went out in that gray dawn, the scene resembled a World War I battlefield. But that house had lost one shingle and a couple of screens. We can do it in America, child by child, family by family, block by block, city by city, we're going to take back this country for our children again. Janet struck something with people across the country. Somebody who cared, somebody who worked hard, somebody who always tried to do what was right, a sense of decency and responsibility have been carried through every part of her life and a feeling that you know those who have broad shoulders and can do it need to be helping other people Miami was just becoming a big city and we got the big city problems when word came down that the governor would appoint Janet Reno as the new state attorney, I think it caught a lot of us by surprise. We've got to realize that it takes a proper mix of individual concern, concern within the family and neighborhood, and a commitment not just to being tough when it's too late, but starting programs up front that can prevent crime in the first place. Janet was very clear with people that if we are going to get to the root causes of crime, we need to better understand what's happening with the children and youth of our community and their families. So she met with child advocates. She met with those youth and family advocates to develop a strategy to take on these problems. In the 70s, there was not a whole lot going on in child welfare. You never read it in the newspaper. If it's a young lady in conflict between the family and the American culture, let's help her then before she has a real drug problem at age 13 or 14 and it's too late. In order to get projects off the ground, your funders need to feel that the leadership in the community is, is behind us. So whenever we would go to start a project, I'd always get a letter from her supporting it. And that meant a lot. Community leaders step forward, all of the things that children have now that they didn't, you could probably trace back to her support. Children loved her. I think it was how she treated them. She always spoke to them and made them feel like they were important. That came down from her family. We come from a family that always adored children. We were the ones that were adored, so we adored the next generation. Mother was unconventional by most anybody's standards. She didn't have a whole lot of rules for us, but she very firmly expected us to do what was right. We were all close enough together in size that uh, we would have great scrambling fights. A good wrestling match was perfectly all right, but you didn't pull hair, you didn't bite, and you didn't scratch. Those weren't right. Mother was dying when Clinton got elected. There was a feeler from Washington as to whether Janet would be interested in a job in the administration. She said, no, I'm taking care of my mother. Mother died just before Christmas. Jenny had, betwixt all the people coming in and out, finally gotten in and was taking a nap. Mary Doyle called and said, I need to talk to Janet. And I said, you can't. 
she's taking a nap, Mary, and I'm not going to wake her up. She said, well, wake her up and ask her if she wants to be Attorney General of the United States. She has devoted her life to making her community safer, keeping children out of trouble, and helping families. She has truly put people first. Any confirmation of a high-level position like this brings anxiety. You know, will it go smoothly? We all gathered in the office and we watched on TV. Ms. Reno brings with her a reputation for integrity that's beyond question and a commitment to the principle of justice in its fullest sense. This was such a significant responsibility for her. What people didn't know at that moment was the gift they were about to receive, which was this woman as Attorney General of the United States, the people's lawyer. General Reno, congratulations. The people who work for Janet Reno truly care about her. The feeling is clearly mutual. I'm going to miss you so much, but you've just got to come to Washington, and I've got to come back here. Thank you. Janet came to Washington unmoved by a lot of what moves people and changes them when they come to, to D.C. She came here as a local prosecutor, understanding that most of what happens in our justice system happens at the state and local level, and that you can set policies in the federal government, but unless you interact in a substantial way, in a significant way, in a substantive way, um, with your state and local counterparts, you're really not going to affect change. She was prepared to do things with the Justice Department that had never been done before. And it meant coming up with new approaches and making new partnerships. Um, the Justice Department worked with the Department of Education, the Department of Labor, with Health and Human Services. It took guts to try the approaches that she tried. When Janet became Attorney General, one of the first things she did was communicate with the staff. She wanted to support them in every facet of the department's work. This was a message that the department was longing to hear. Someone who saw themselves as a leader of their division that would lead them forward and give them the supports and the tools they needed. Janet encouraged all the U.S. attorneys to use their offices as bully pulpits for the kinds of things that she thought were important. And among those uh, was a focus on, on children. I would like to use the law of this land to do everything I possibly can to protect America's children. And we start with making sure that we have parents who are equipped to raise their children. Nothing that we do can ever be a substitute for a great and strong family. She understood that she had responsibilities to enforce the law. At the same time, she understood that beneath this set of responsibilities was the need to help address societal conditions. Some people would say, she's more a social worker than she is a prosecutor. The truth of the matter was that she was both. And to be a good prosecutor, she understood she also needed to have some social work in her. Time has certainly shown that with those approaches, um, she has saved lives, she has prevented people from becoming involved in the criminal justice system. What I would consider some landmark policy making that has had a huge impact uh, on America in the 21st century. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask you to cast your gaze at the 78th Attorney General of the United States, Janet Reno, who is the embodiment of integrity. Janet had a significant number of successes on many levels when it came to antitrust, when it came to civil rights, when it came to the environment. But she will be remembered as the ultimate child, youth, and family advocate. She understood that there really is a very important federal role, along with the state and local role, as well as a role for philanthropy and our nonprofit community. So in a way, her legacy is a roadmap about how we can better support these populations of young people and their families. Janet was a vibrant member of the community once she returned home 
and never really saw those responsibilities diminish in her mind. As many people know, Janet suffers from Parkinson's, but she did not let that illness hold her back from making her contributions. She truly was remarkable in that regard. As I come down the driveway through the woods with a problem, an obstacle to overcome, that house is a symbol to me that you can do anything you really want to if it's the right thing to do and you put your mind to it.